Hey there, music lovers. Thank you so much for dropping by the channel. Uh, I thought I would go over the set list that Yes has chosen for their Yes at 50 tour. Uh, just got kicked off last night in Illinois, and it will run all summer long. And, um, you know, very interesting when it comes to Yes. There's so much amazing stuff here. Um, what's amazing, first of all, is that it's been 50 years since Yes has been around. That's a long, long time. And, um, you know, they've got a lot of music. There have been a lot of band members. And um, that's one reason why we've got two bands going out as Yes at this particular time, which is another amazing thing that we've got two bands with the same name going out. Of course, the one with John Anderson is going to be Yes featuring John Anderson and Rick Wakeman and Trevor Rabin. You know, there's got to be some way to differentiate them. Um, but how many bands can you think of that have gone out in two factions with the same name at the same time? You know, put that down below. I'd be very curious to uh, hear about it. I, I was trying to think off the top of my head. I can't think of any bands that are in the same scenario that Yes is currently in. Uh, and I did a whole video about this. It's one of my most popular videos um, about going to see Yes this summer. And, um, you know, in that video, I kind of told everybody that, look, you know, of the two bands, I'm much more interested in the band that's got John Anderson because he's the voice of Yes. And that's the main reason why when I see the one with John Davison, and I've seen this lineup twice, and I saw him with Chris Squire, and I've seen him without Chris Squire, and both times felt like there was something lacking. And what was lacking was just the soul the soul of yes uh, chris was the heart you know the heart was there from the very very beginning and it's a shame that he couldn't make it to 50 years with the rest of the guys um but you know john anderson i always thought he was the soul he there was just there's just something about john anderson that his voice and his way about him his cosmic nature fits the songs and when you see that see that live you need that connection and john davison to me he just falls dead flat like i just i don't like his voice it gets on my nerves and i and you know it just to me it just like ruins it it really really does i have to kind of look for other things to kind of focus on you know and i'm not really used to that at a yes show i like going there to hear everything and when i go see yes it's like all right i'm watching steve <laughs> It's like, you know, and now on this tour, there's going to be a couple of other guys that you can watch. Uh, they're going to have some guests. Tony K is going to be playing with them on the entire tour. Uh, so he was at this show. I'll get to that later. Um, and from what I understand, Patrick Moraz, who was with them on one album, the Relayer album, which is a very popular album among the fans. Um, it's got some great stuff on it. Um, he's going to be joining them for a couple of dates in Philly, from what I understand. Um, so that should be interesting. I'd be very curious to see what they play with him. I hope they just don't do soon. I mean, you know, this is the perfect chance to bring out Sound Chaser, which they haven't played in a really long time, or even Gates, which has been almost 20 years since they've played that. You know, they really need to do something special. I hope they don't do soon. All right. But anyway, let's get into this set list. All right. Um, they kick things off with Close to the Edge. I mean, that's a classic. They're starting off with an epic. So that's awesome. Um, after that, they do Nine Voices, which is a song from the latter album. I find that kind of curious, but I guess anything goes. And that's one of the strengths that Yes Proper has is that they can dig into the catalog and play a lot of different things um, that the one with Trevor Rabin is not likely to go to. You're not going to see the Rabin band play anything from Topographic Oceans unless it's like a snippet. They're not going to do like the Revealing Science of God. They're just not going to wind up doing that. So yeah, Nine Voices, to me, kind of a curious choice. I get the feeling that coming out of the big epic of Close to the Edge, they wanted to kind of slow things down a bit and um, they kind of get a breather. This is more of a Steve Howe, John Davison song. Um, I think they could have done something better. I mean, Wondrous Stories would have been better here, but hey, you know, it is what it is. After that, Parallels. Um, I talked about this song in a video that I did about the most underrated Yes songs. I think this definitely is, although to be more specific, it's the live version on Yes shows 
that's the only one that I ever listened to. Uh, I've heard this band do parallels, and to me, it's just very plodding, and it doesn't have any of the zip and the energy that the one with Chris Squire has. It's a Chris Squire song. Maybe that's why they're doing it. Um, it was supposed to be on Fish Out of Water, but he wound up saving it for uh, going for the one, which was a good idea. After that, they uh, slow things down a bit again with um, Steve Howe solo, Mood for a Day, great track from Fragile. And then they do Leaves of Green, which is from um, Topographic Oceans. Um, just a little bit of a piece of one of the songs there, and that's always a good one. And then after that, they pull out Fly From Here, the first part, We Can Fly, which is kind of curious too. Um, what's interesting about this is that you've got John Davison singing a song that was done by another guy that replaced John Anderson with Benoit David. This is the uh, only album that they made with Benoit David, Fly From Here. This was the album that had Trevor Horn, and they redid a song that, yes, had come up with during the drama time, but they never did anything with it then. They brought it back, they developed the whole album around it, and um, Benoit David sang it, although Trevor Horn recently put his vocal into it, so you essentially have the drama era lineup on this Fly From Here album, um, and it came out in a very limited way. And it's, uh, you know, I don't know that it really needed to be done. I can see why they would have done that. Um, just because, you know, why not just add your vocal on? It would sound cool. But I think that Benoit David owns that album. And, uh, you know, I've never heard John Davison sing this. But I've never heard John Davison sing anything that I like. So chances are not looking good for that one. All right. Then we got Sweet Dreams. I believe that's from Time and a Word. That's a cool song. They've been playing that quite a bit lately. I think they played it on the, one of the last couple of tours. You know, that's one they could probably dig another song out of the earlier days, maybe. I don't know. I mean, I like it, but they could probably find something better. Heart of the Sunrise is next. That's a, a great, great track from Fragile. One of my favorite Yes songs. That is epic. Uh, and it closes out the second set. And um, the second set starts off with Perpetual Change, which is... Uh, Really, really cool to, to see. That's a song that uh, the ARW Yes has been also doing. Um, then they do Does It Really Happen from Drama. That is really, really cool. To me, that's the best, one of the best parts of this set, aside from Close to the Edge. Um, that's a great song from that album, Drama. And then after that, they do Believe Again, which I believe is from the album that they did with John Davison, which I gave uh, my vote as being the worst Yes album. I did a whole video about the worst Yes albums and the one with John Davison, uh, Heaven and Earth, tops the list easily. And so, uh, you know, I can't believe they're doing that turd in a anniversary tour. Then we get to Awaken. That's how they close out the second set. Close out the show, really, before we get to the encore. Um, and that's also another song that ARW has been uh, doing lately, although they do a little bit of a different take on it. And I got to be honest with you, I'm not too down with it. Um, they do some weird thing in the beginning. They eventually, because the song is so damn long, that eventually they settle into the groove of the original. And uh, that's really a John Anderson piece with the harp. And his vocal is just so amazing. That's such a spiritual song. That, and John Davison doesn't have any of that. He's got this hippie kind of vibe. It doesn't fit in with the cosmic stuff. So I don't know what to make of that. Then we get to the encore. And from what I understand, Tony Kay joins them for the encore, which is going to be Yours is No Disgrace. Great track there. Roundabout and Starship Trooper. And that closes the show. And interesting to note that Tony Kay originally played on two of those three songs. So they bring him out for the encore. You know, he hasn't played with the band in a long, long time, and they can't give him three songs that he played on. So they got to give him Roundabout, which he did play on it in the 80s when he came back. Um, but since they played Perpetual Change earlier in the show, and they did Sweet Dreams, which he was also on, why didn't they put one of those into the encore and just come out and just give Tony an encore with all of his original stuff, you know? But I guess it really doesn't matter. He's played Roundabout so many times, he probably thinks he wrote it. 
Okay, so there we go. There is a set list. So my question to you is, are you going to go see this show? Does it change your mind at all? You know, it doesn't change mine. I always had the attitude of, look, uh, I may go, but only if a friend of mine is going to be going too. If he's not, then I probably won't go out of my way to go check this out. Um, you know, now ARW is starting their tour in the U.S. in a couple days, and you know, I'm interested to see what they do. Um, I'm going to be doing a set list review on that, so be sure to stay tuned. Uh, I think ARW is really due for a set list change. They've been kind of playing a lot of the same stuff in the last couple of tours. As I mentioned earlier, you know, they're not the more likely to go digging into the back catalog and doing a lot of weird stuff, uh, although you never know. You just never, never know with these guys. Um, I hope they prove me wrong because it would be really cool to hear them do some really oddball stuff from the past, but we shall see. Um, I'm looking forward to seeing them. I'll definitely go check them out whenever they come close. And you know, when it comes to seeing Yes, or I guess not seeing Yes, it's more than just John Davison's vocals. I just kind of feel like the overall band is lacking. Like, uh, yeah, there's no Chris Squire, so there's no really cool bass player to watch. I mean, Sherwood is capable. He gets through it, he does a good job, but I'm not sitting there watching him like I did Chris. Um, the vocals are not there, the background vocals. You don't have the Anderson Squire background vocal thing. And plus the tempos have kind of gone to a weird place. Like, you know, the song Parallels that I talked about earlier. On Yes shows, it's a whole different beast than what they're going to wind up doing. Um, in my opinion, Yes is dead, okay? And I know that may shock some people to hear that, may sadden you, but, you know, everything comes to an end, okay? And Yes came to an end when Chris Squire passed away. You know, he was the heart of Yes, and you can't have Yes without him. And you also can't have, in my opinion, a really credible version of Yes without John Anderson. Yeah, you got Steve Howe in the other version. Yes proper, however you want to call it. Yes is what it is. But the voice of Yes, the soul of Yes is very important, I feel, to the experience. And that's all we've got now. Choose your experience. You know, are you experienced <laughs> in Yes? Which one is it going to be? You know, is it going to be the one with Steve Howe or is it going to be the one with John Anderson? And let's not forget about Wakeman. We keep talking about this uh, Anderson versus Howe, but Wakeman's over there too. He was the, uh, you know, quintessential, absolutely the ultimate keyboard player for Yes. And he's right there with Anderson, you know, and Trevor Raven's no slouch. You know, he's very different than Steve Howe, but if it wasn't for Trevor Raven, who knows where Yes would be now? I mean, he gave them a kick in the ass along with Trevor Horn. The two Trevors took Yes out of the dump and they put them on the top. So, you know, there's a lot to absorb with this whole Yes thing. So let me know what you're going to do. Are you going to go see this show? What do you think about this set list? Um, ARW set list review coming soon. Be sure to give this video a thumbs up if you like it. Hit subscribe and I'll talk to you later.